reports, updates. This is the progress. Progress. The progress report. There. Good evening, Lennox Gasper here, and welcome to Progress Report. And in studio with me is the minister within the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development, the Honorable Anand Prasad. Minister Prasad, welcome to this program and thanks for taking the time out to share with us the updates, highlights and programs of, and progress of your ministry. Minister, um, it is the first quarter. We are in the third month and uh, we've just recently had the five billion dollars passed in the budget for the CIIP projects and uh, also the services that they have to deliver to various communities. Could you explain to us why does the local democratic organs play such important part and role in local governance and service delivery? Well, first of all, let me say um, a pleasant good evening to you, to your viewers and listeners all across Guyana. And um, I want to thank you for inviting me on this program, the Progress Report, eh? Yes. Um, first of all, let me say that local government and regional development uh, encompasses Guyana, all 10 regions. And uh, the $5 billion is just a part of the budget um, for the Ministry of Local Government and Regional Development. Um, what the 70 NDCs that we have throughout Guyana, they assist in maintaining their respective NDC in all spheres. Um, one, um, in drainage and irrigation, um, the maintenance of roads. Um, they also maintain um, the surrounding of schools, health centers, etc. Um, with regards to SIP, um, you know, in our manifesto, the PPPC's manifesto, we mentioned that we want to create 50,000 jobs um, for our tenure, the five years in government. And that is one way of um, employment, um, especially for the poorer class of people. And that transcends itself in all 70 NDCs. Um, what they normally would do is like what I alluded to earlier, the maintenance of uh, some roads, some canals, drainage, etc. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Um, could you tell us about the 714 million set aside as a finance grant, financial grant to the LDOs to maintain infrastructure and to improve service within their area? Good. So the LDOs, which are the local democratic organs, um, they assist in a most substantial way um, in, in, in maintenance, here again with roads, but in a very substantial way. Um, with regards to the SIP workers, they take care of the smaller jobs of the canals, road patching. Um, this grant that we would give to the local democratic organs is to for the purchase of um, crusher run, for the patching um, of roads and whatever other repairs have to be done to roads. Um, street lights, which um, is an important component um, that this government and the ministry is paying, paying attention to um, for the safety of the citizens that live within those communities. Um, that is ongoing uh, on a yearly basis and I am happy to tell you that the residents within the NDCs are extremely happy and proud of what we are doing. Lovely. There has been 
um, a huge amount of money set aside for some special project um, within the area of Parika, Monroe Poe Market, as well as the iconic Georgetown City Hall. Um, where are we with those projects, Minister? Yeah, um, those are three huge projects. Um, let me first of all start with City Hall. For years, that building um, have been left to deteriorate. Um, that is an eyesore in Georgetown. It is one of our historic buildings in Guyana. And I don't want to hit at the mayor, but I have to. Um, for me, he is not serving the citizens of Georgetown the way that they're supposed to be served. Um, I think he's probably expired by now. Take, for instance, the cleanup campaign that was initiated by His Excellency Dr. Mohammed Irfan Ali. From then to now, when you look at Georgetown or you drive across this country, you see a different Guyana. And the mayor was one of the persons who jumped on the bandwagon to knock this project down. But as a caring government, as a government who wants to transform this country, the president decided to launch this cleanup campaign, which is continuing. And here is where I want to urge the residents to take care of your garbage in the proper manner, dispose of it properly, and do not, do not litter. This is Georgetown, our garden city, and we want it to remain that way. So let's get back to City Hall. It is in a deplorable state. And the government decided, His Excellency and Cabinet decided, that we're going to expend in excess of $800 million. That is a rollover project. It's a multi-year project. Um, it's done by a company out of Trinidad, Fides Construction, and works have commenced. I think we had given $200 million last year for the commencement, and another $300 million this year. And um, it's an 18 months uh, project. Uh, hopefully, um, it will be completed within that time frame. Wonderful. And the, the markets, both Monrepo and the Purika markets, I know those um, residents who are listening would want to hear specifically yes, their but, projects too. But Gaspar, not mm -hmm. only for the residents, mm -hmm. but for the vendors also. Beautiful. The vendors are also important. Um, Purika market, if you've ever gone there, yes, I sure you did. Monrepo market, there are two huge markets in Guyana. And for me, every year, they grow by leaps and bounds. Um, moreover, with the agricultural drive, uh, we took that into consideration. Um, definitely, we have to expand those markets. But the expansion of those markets, um, and you will see in the near future, um, more markets will be rehabilitated and expanded. It is because a lot of people visit the Purdica market. A lot of produce comes out of Leguan, Vietnam, uh, Hubu, Burasiri, and all these areas. And there are a lot of persons from Georgetown, from East Bank, from East Coast, that will go to the Purdica market, especially on Sundays, to buy their produce for resale in Georgetown or on the East Coast or on the East Bank. And we have to make it conducive for the buyers and make it comfortable for the vendors. And that is what we have, we have embarked upon. The Perica Phase 1 started last year. The Monrepo Phase 1 started last year. And like I mentioned earlier, um, it's a rollover program. So phase two has started at both markets. And um, I hope 
very shortly in a few months, um, phase two will be completed and then we embark on phase three. Wonderful. So after the rehabilitation of these markets, um, what is next in plan? I just wanted to like sneak into your head. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, look, like I said, mm. we need to make it comfortable for the vendors and the, 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 um, um, the buyers. Um, everything cannot be done at one time. Um, it all depends on the cash flow of the government. And um, there are many things, like we want to create a situation whereby, um, take for instance the fish department, you know, the vendors must be able to wash that place off, um, the, the sanitation trucks or the, the garbage trucks should come there on time in the afternoons to clean that waste, you know. But adequate water supply, um, and some of it will be incorporated in this phase two project, okay. all right? But with phase three, you will see a first class. A more modernized. Modernized and first class markets. Yes, lovely. Um, Minister, Let's talk about uh, the local government reform and uh, what's the progress there. Um, it's almost two years since uh, the government has been in office. Mm -hmm. And I know even before you would have gotten into office, into this very ministry, you yourself would have probably um, seen areas and loopholes within the local government um, law and within the system of things that needs reform, that needs changes. Yes. Let's talk about those that you would have seen and those that, and where we are so far with the whole local government reform program. All right, so a um, very good question, Gaspar. Um, the ministry and the government as a whole um, have been looking at um, the laws governing NDCs and local government. Um, there are um, some things on the table that we are looking at. There are some things that the Attorney General, the Honorable Anand Andalal, um, is also looking at. But knowing his portfolio, um, he has lots yes. and lots of files on his desk. But it's an ongoing process. Um, but let me assure you that we are looking at reform. It wouldn't happen in one year, but it's, um, it will happen progressively. But it's something that is on the table and is being looked at. Is there any area, like specifically, that you would want to maybe touch on? Like I could, I could recall, for example, serving on the council mm -hmm. um, from the 28 to 1, the structure in terms of the prices were all old and antiquated, um, that persons would pay for rates and taxes, the fines that you give them, those things definitely need restructuring. And then the building code, what, what, what was um, expected to pass for building, it was appalling when you read and you realize that the kitchen couldn't attach to the house and the garage had to be built separately but that was for a different time and a different period. Mm -hmm. um, but now things have um, developed, and so those things have to be changed because we all have the kitchen now part of the house. So it's, and you only had to build with pitch pine and clay bricks and these kind of things. So those things I know, particularly for the 28 or one, many others, mm -hmm. that would need general reform mm -hmm. within the regional section and other, the wider spectrum of the NDCs and the um, RDCs, mm -hmm. what do you think that you, you, know, you see that would definitely need addressing? Yeah, look, Georgetown is a very old city. And let us take, for instance, the drainage, yes. um, especially in, the, in, 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 in Main Street and Waterloo Street and Carmichael Street. When this um, city was designed for drainage, um, was probably for about two millimeters of water, you know, or two inches of water, rainfall. Um, now you know what is happening. So what 
has happened over the years is that we looked at what was happening in Georgetown and its environs. And people should only pay taxes for services. If there is not the adequate services for the household, I do not agree in raising taxes. I do not agree. Um, and I'm pretty sure, I'm 100% sure, that once the, the people, the citizens of this country, but let's speak for Georgetown, because I think that's where you served. No, in Linden. Oh, in Linden. Yes. Well, let's take Linden, you know. If you have garbage collection on a regular basis, the cleaning of drains, of parkets, you know, um, um, street lights, you know, uh, proper security, people will see where, it do where their dollar is being spent. Yes. And they will not hesitate to pay. All right? Um, we took a conscious decision not to increase taxes at this point in time um, because we don't feel that adequate services, timely services, are being given to the citizens of this country. Something that we are working on, something that is in progress, and um, it will come. It will come. But like I said, things will have to be in place. I see your point and I couldn't agree with you more because once people see where their dollars are being spent, they are more comfortable to deal with an increase because they feel now that this is they, they're putting in the works. So mm -hmm. I don't have a problem. And so I see the reason and I hope those that are listening, those local um, leaders, they will understand the, the, the general vision mm -hmm. of government as to why you have taken that conscious decision not to add the increase. Yeah. Take, for instance, Linden. Take for instance, Linden. Take for instance, Linden, with regards to security. I am pretty sure, I'm 100% sure, that there's a breakage of stalls or a stall on a weekly basis. On a weekly basis. And people, the stall holders, are adamant about that when it happens. But that will have to change. Guyana is transforming. Guyana is now oil and gas country. And those things will fall in place. And it wouldn't fall overnight. But believe you me, it's going to come. Yes, thank you, Minister. Um, before we close the program, I am sure you know you've the, the ministry has been working at a pace ever since Jump Street. You guys have been moving. It's like you just hit the ground yeah. running. The government just was moving. Um, what was one of the most challenging region for you? And um, why? How did you overcome those challenges and why? Look, when we took power on the 2nd of August 2022, it was a challenge to get power, to go into government. And not only for me, but I can only speak for me. I have visited all the regions and there were serious problems in healthcare, in education, in roads, in water, in drainage, in irrigation. And I am not saying this because I want to knock at the opposition, but it is a fact. Those who know me, I'm a blood speaker. Right? It is a fact. And you can testify for Linden. Yes. Nothing. That the, the, the APNU AFC government, and I don't want to get into politics, did not. Did not do anything for the citizenry of this country. One road or two roads says nothing. And you mentioned the pace that this government yes. is moving at. Tremendous pace. Sometimes I find it hard to keep up with it. 
<laughs> which is why it's strange right? that I saw the, the um, complaint. Um, <laughs> and well, that complaint from came, the came right, from you know, the same, yeah. you know. And um, and he talking about pace and speed. Yeah, yeah. But you know, a lot of those names that were mentioned in the press, um, they refuted it. They says you know they did not mm-hmm. subscribe to it. Um, it was only one man, apparently. But um, we're going to continue. We are going to continue because we promise in our manifesto to deliver on certain things within the five years. And I will tell you now, we will deliver more than what we have in the manifesto. Moving forward, what can person look forward for coming out of local government? and regional development. All right, Um, so (coughs) we don't work in isolation, the ministry or any of the ministers. Um, For me, when I go into regions, I look at hospitals, um, the healthcare system, the schools, um, um, GWI. I visit all those places. And when I come back to Georgetown, I will then re- report to the respective minister, and then they deal with it. Yeah. All right. Some of it we do from a local government level, so we deal with that at the ministry. But whatever, and it was um, an order handed down by his president, by the, his excellency, that we must not go there just to look at schools or just to look at GWI but spend some time, walk around, see, talk to the citizens, talk to people, find out what is happening within your communities, and come back and report. And we will then see how best we can you know, solve those problems. In closing, what is the one thing you would want the listening public to take away from this progress report that you would have delivered to the nation? All right, I would like to say that, look, we have started the transformation. We have started, and when I say we, the government, um, to, to put infrastructure and roads and schools um, um, in the proper state that they're supposed to be in. Um, and we have started that process. I am asking the citizens of this country, the Guyanese people, to join with us. Forget about the politics. Politics is over. It's going to come in 2025. But join with us now and let us as one, and like His Excellency, one Guyana, develop this country. We all need to play our part. Lovely. And that is the clarion call of every minister as they come and give their progress report that you need, we need to get involved with this transformation, with the progress, with the change. Do not stand on the fence. Do not be outside of what is happening and the changes that Guyana is going through. Get involved. Play your part. Thank you for listening. Thank you, Minister, for taking the time out once again to be on this program to give the progress report from your ministry. And you've been listening to Minister Anand Prasad. And this has been Progress Report. I am Lennox Gasper.